Based on some spy images of the new refreshed Model S, Tesla might be adding some more changes to this vehicle. We're going to talk about that and also talk about a change that Tesla recently made to the Model Y as well. I'm Jonathan and welcome to Cleaner Watt. In late January, Tesla revealed the details and pictures of the newly refreshed Model S. With this refresh came a wide body exterior tweak, plus a complete interior refresh. Tesla also surprisingly replaced the Performance Model S with a Plaid version, and they renamed the longer range version unveiled earlier, the Plaid Plus. I did a whole video talking about the differences between the old Model S and the new Model S, and I'll make sure that's linked in the description below if you're curious to know about all the changes. However, with the new spy shots of the Model S refresh out in the wild, Tesla appears to have a few more surprises up their sleeve. Nick George recently posted on Twitter that he saw a Model S plaid test mule out in the wild in Carmel, California. He mentioned that it had the new interior, but not the yoke steering wheel. He also mentioned that the new wide body stance was pretty noticeable. Now, when Tesla revealed the refresh Model S, it of course had a yoke steering wheel and all the pictures that Tesla shared on their website. But a lot of people have talked about the fact that Tesla may introduce a regular steering wheel. And in fact, there was a picture of a Model S with a regular steering wheel hidden in the code of Tesla's website. Several years ago, Electric put out an article with some leaked photos of the new supposed Model S interior. And as you can see, the picture that Electric put out, the steering wheel looks a lot like what is being seen in these test mules. Now, when it comes to a yoke steering wheel, some people love it, some people hate it. And some people have also brought up that the yoke steering wheel may not be legal in some parts of the world. However, we know it will be legal in the UK, according to this Tesla Roddy article. And it will be interesting to see if it's legal here in the United States, Canada, and also in places like China. When it comes to the functionality of the yoke steering wheel, the yoke steering wheel will have haptic buttons that allow for turn signal control, headlight control, horn, cruise autopilot control, windshield wiper control, and also a microphone so you can give voice commands to your Tesla. Also, as we covered in the past, this new Model S with the yoke steering wheel will have no more stocks, and I assume this will be the same even with the regular shaped steering wheel if that is available. And as Elon Musk said, the car guesses drive direction based on what obstacles it sees. He did mention too that you can override this on the touchscreen. So because these test mules have a regular shaped steering wheel, this is leading me and a lot of other people to believe that Tesla is also going to offer this regular shaped steering wheel as an option for the Model S. Here's a picture that Nick George tweeted out of this steering wheel. And as you can see, other than the shape, the actual middle of the steering wheel looks very similar to the yoke. Also, Cody Mark on Twitter pointed out that in these pictures, it appears like the side repeater cameras stick out a little more than the old cameras. Another change that Tesla might make before they actually ship the Model S is there might actually be haptic buttons down where the middle console is as well to control the drive, reverse, neutral, etc. portions of the car. Tesla Roddy recently put out an article with some pictures of a test mule Model S refresh version that was seen out in the wild. And as you can see on this close up picture, there on the bottom hand right side, you can see that there's actually some places there that say park, reverse, neutral, and drive. And there's something else being covered up by a cup. Based on Tesla's pictures of the refreshed Model S interior and specifically the center console, right at the very bottom of the wireless phone charging docking station there in the center console, you'll notice where I've highlighted there in red, there is a potential spot there where Tesla could add haptic buttons to control the drive, reverse, neutral, etc. some functions like that without having to use the touchscreen. Adding controls to this part of the vehicle could make a lot of sense, and it could be a good backup for the on-screen controls of drive modes. Now, as far as I know, no customer has taken delivery of a new refresh Model S yet, and it still seems like it might be a couple weeks before that happens. However, if you order a Model S right now, it really won't take that long to get the new refresh Model S. For the long range version, Tesla is estimating delivery around five to 11 weeks. 
For the Plaid version, Tessa is estimating a shorter delivery time of between three and eight weeks. And for the Plaid Plus, Tesla is still giving a vague late 2021 delivery timeline. In other Tesla news, Tesla recently added a standard range Model Y variant to their website, and it had a price of just $41,990. However, Tesla just removed that Model Y standard range version from the website and is no longer available. Now, when you go to the Tesla website, you can order a long range all wheel drive variant for a reduced price of $48,990 and the performance model, which was recently increased by $1,000 for $60,990. Just a short while ago, Elon Musk responded to Jay Grunel 305 suite, asking him why the standard range Model Y was removed from the Tesla website. Elon Musk said, quote, it is still available off menu, but I don't think the range in many drive conditions yet meets the Tesla standard of excellence. This is consistent with what Elon Musk said previously when he said that range under 250 miles for the Model Y was unacceptable. However, they did release the standard range Model Y, so there was a little bit of surprise for a lot of people. I, for one, didn't think Tesla was gonna have a standard range Model Y, and it looks like when they actually came to real world testing, they really weren't happy with the range of the standard range Model Y. Now, in that tweet, Elon Musk gave the main reason. He talked about that the range wasn't acceptable. And I believe part of the reason the range was not acceptable is because of other competition, like the new Bolt EUV and also the Volkswagen ID4. As you can see on this chart, the Bolt EUV in the LT trim level and the VW ID4 in the Pro trim level both have a lower price than what Tesla was offering the standard range version of the Model Y at and they offer a little bit extra EPA estimated range as well. Now I understand the Model Y standard range version had more tech and more features and by the time you added some of those features to these vehicles the price would be the same or even more. However that doesn't change the fact that Tesla likes to be the leader when it comes to range and in their class here between these two vehicles they were not the leader in range. One other side reason why I believe Tesla might have decided it wasn't worth selling the standard range Model Y is the fact that it might have been taking away from the standard range plus Model 3 cells and Tesla needs to keep those cells up while they still have everything being made at Fremont. Once Tesla opens up Gigafactory Austin and they have more production capabilities for the Model Y, they might bring back a standard range version of sorts of the Model Y, but I assume this time with a longer range. So that's all for today. Let me know what you think about Tesla's decision with the Model Y, and also let me know what you think about these potential changes for the Model S as well. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end, and I hope you learned something and enjoyed it as well. Please also make sure that if you are not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, I wanted to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and the other supporters listed on the screen. Thank you so much.